What on earth is going on with Mbappe right now? Last year, he signed the best contract in world football. Now, he's training with the unwanted PSG players and not part of the first team plans. And with one year left on his current contract, the Parisians want to sell him ASAP and not lose him for free next summer. For now, it's the transfer saga of the year. He's in limbo. So why not get his younger brother involved as Ethan's currently in the PSG Youth Academy. He's the key to our French exit plan. Because in this video, We'll be simulating their careers together on the same team. Where one goes, the other follows. So if Real Madrid put in a juicy offer for Kylian, the brothers come as a package deal. They're both off to Madrid. It also helps that Ethan is a center mid, unlike his older brother. He's only 17 and can potentially be molded into a striker or a more attacking player later down the line. They're not any competition for each other. They perfectly slot in together. And thanks to a PC mod, I've been able to get Ethan Mbappe's face scan into the game. It's basically Kylian if he had dreads. I'm gonna go with the controversial move for season one and just let his contract run out at PSG. He's already a top player. He's already a world-class star, so development plans aren't really gonna play too much of an impact on his career. However, Ethan, at center mid, he has potential to be special. He is a 66 overall center mid. His development plans and training is going to be monumental. It's pivotal in order to transform him into the type of quality player his older brother is. And then it's free game. Who knows? Are they gonna go on to win trophies together, represent the national team together, become a brotherly bond and a duo that is just unstoppable. We're going to have to find out as we sim season one, we've done this with the Bellingham brothers, the Williams brothers, and Athletic Bilbao, and now the Mbappes have their time to shine. So if you're going to enjoy, make sure to drop the video a like down below, hit subscribe, turn on the notifications so you never miss out on any content, and off we go. Now it still might be a pipe dream for Ethan to be nominated for the Ballon d'Or, but his big brother Kylian is up for the award in 2023 alongside Lewandowski, Haaland, and Vinicius Jr. I wonder how long it's going to take for his brother to start competing with him for the golden ball, being side by side as the Mbappe brotherhood get one under their belt in this career sim. And better yet, in the midst of all this transfer drama and the saga continues as he submitted a transfer request. Oh my days, it is so over. This is their last one song in Paris, so buckle up. It's been quite the trophy haul in France for the Mbappe brothers joining forces and absolutely walking league on. The Farmers League was absolutely demolished as they accomplished 107 points, finishing on top in the Trophée des Champions, absolutely battered Nantes 5 nil. And same goes in the Coupe Nationale, they were just ruthless with it against Mets. In the Champions League continentally, they faced a little bit of a road bump. In Group H, they finished third with 10 points, therefore relegated to the Europa League, and it ended up being PSG vs United in the final. And they had no problems taking home the Europa for the first time in club history. It's been a quadruple season for the Mbappes and we're only one campaign deep. You could argue that they've peaked, but there's still so much more to play for. So I'm just running out. Mbappe's contract is literally about to expire with one month left remaining, but that didn't stop him from getting a plus four upgrade. Now standing at a 95, pretty much the best player in the world. He submitted a transfer request and he's become the top goal scorer with 29 goals and 24 assists. The French Ninja Turtle with over 53 goal contributions in 59 appearances. He is something else, but let's take a look at his brother who's a little bit further down the pecking order. He's still 17 and still has potential to be special. He's in the 70s range and because we actually released and sold all the center mid competition, Ethan took center stage and he stepped up to the plate. In 49 appearances, hit 15 goals and 9 assists with his brother right in front of him, 26 goal contributions with an average match rating of 7.85. His market value skyrocketed 930 13% to 3.8 million and his older brothers actually took a hit with a 14% decrease however he's still the highest rated whilst we were simulating though no clubs went in to actually offer for Mbappe or negotiate him on a pre-contract we had United come through with a 116.6 million pound bid in January. It could be a potential club destination later down the line but he's got a few more things to tick off his bucket list before he ends up in England we've let Kylian go on a free and now he's just become a free agent He's open to any offers in world football right now. He's looking for a new home. The drama and the circus show. That is the Mbappe transfer saga continues. Meanwhile, while that's all going down, it's actually the 2024 Euros this summer. Ethan is still quite a fair distance away from representing his nation. For now, this is the only realm of endeavor where the brothers are separated. And that's what happens when you don't have the Mbappe brothers connecting together on the same pitch. Lebler were eventually eliminated to Italia 2-1 in the semi-finals after 
to beat in Germany on penalties in the quarters. That performance isn't going to do wonders for Kilian's Ballon d'Or credentials. However, he is putting a case together for himself, not winning trophies, but scoring six goals and being the tournament top goal scorer in only five appearances. Now that's an achievement. Since no offers were coming in for Mbappe, we had to take matters into our own hands. We're going all in for Kilian in Saudi Arabia. Short-term project Mbappe is in full swing, just a one-season wonder. It's actually crazy that this can actually go down in real life. Is he actually going to go ahead and risk his reputation, secure the bag in Saudi, or just cop a season rotting on the bench for PSG as he's taken a massive pay cut? For the contract, we're getting him to sign 61k a week as a free agent. Let's be honest though, this still probably wouldn't get me to watch the Saudi league, but a deal's a deal. There you have the confirmation, the deed is done. Al-Hilal is also the destination for his younger brother too. And now all things are official, 10 million pounds as PSG accepted. And look at the team they've stepped into here. Al-Hilal with all their 2023 transfer additions. We've got Mendy, Koulibaly, Neves in midfield, the captain. And now with the addition of the Mbappe brothers, they've got Asian champions potential written all over them. We've got Mbappe on the complete striker. We need that five-star weak foot, even though he's literally the perfect player. 99 sprint speed, 99 acceleration. Usain Bolt ain't catching this man, let alone some Farmers League Saudi defenders. And Playmaker will be applied to Ethan as we need that five-star week for. He needs to be the assist man, working on pretty much every single stat in the passing category. So let's see if they can mesh and perform just as well as they did in Ligue 1. And these brothers are treacherous. They didn't waste any time. They're carving up in the Asian Champions League as they made it all the way through to the final in a 3-2 win against Ronaldo's Al Nasir. In a five-goal thriller final, they absolutely demolished Shangdong Taishan 7-0 on aggregate in the semis. Finished top of their group undefeated. Yeah, they are just a different level, a different class. And Mbappe's out here winning Champions Leagues already, winning the Player of the Month award with ease. And prayers up for our boy Al Sharani, who is going to be injured for the rest of his life. Meanwhile, domestically, they absolutely walked the league with 83 points, battled up against Ronaldo, against Benzema and Kante at Al Itad. It was prepped up to be an exciting title race between some of Europe's former greats. However, in reality, it was just a cake walk. The brothers both achieving Saudi League champion status together and forget the Ballon d'Or because Gillian now has the Russian Saudi League Player of the Season award to his name. Trust me, it's a prestigious accolade in these parts. And he's won the golden boot with his eyes closed because he's also been named in the team of the season alongside his brother. It hasn't been all paychecks and rainbows here. As they've come across their fair few challenges. Gillian's picked up a broken ankle towards the end of the season and he's also experienced a hit in his overall. Downgraded a minus one with his contract running out, he's open, available on the free market again. And we all know the go with the Saudi League top scorer. He knows how to find the back of the net wherever he goes and wasn't ever really in doubt with 50 goal contributions in 33 appearances. This is GOAT level production, an average match rating of 9.06. But at centre mid, Ethan has actually put up some decent stats as well. He still has potential to be special. He's in that realm of top class wonder kid. He's turned 18 and copped a plus four overall boost. Moving to Saudi Arabia has done wonders for his career, to be honest. With 14 goals and 12 assists, he's kind of transforming into a goal scoring midfielder. I'm tempted to convert him into a cam if he keeps these numbers up. 26 goal contributions in 35 appearances is crazy. He actually played more games than his brother and with the playmaker development style, the short king now has five star weak foot. Now listed on the transfer market at 47 million pounds. Meanwhile, top dog, his big brother is valued at 113.5. And with this summer of 2025 free of no international duty, no competitions to take part in, let's hope this injury doesn't hold him back to securing his dream move to Real Madrid. Let's be real here, the level of competition and the league they're currently in, it's not really a challenge for the boys. Now it's time to step it up. We all know it's the world's worst kept transfer secret, but it's Kylian Mbappe to his dream club, Real Madrid. Perez has sorted out the club's finances. The Bernabeu's been freshly renovated, unlike Barca, who they're knocking down their own stadium. The Galacticos are up right now. He's had this dream ever since a young boy, ever since he met Ronaldo back in 2012. Mbappe, he's headed right to the very top here in Madrid. And the Spanish capital have gained a brand new superstar. He's a Galactico, all right, and he knows it. We've had to fork out a gargantuan amount of money here, but in real life, Real Madrid are either going to pick him up on a free or for extremely cheap this summer. Saudi's renewed his contract. We had to pay full price. The day has finally arrived after years and seasons of talks. The love affair between 
Madrid and Mbappe is finally complete. And you know the drill, you know the rules of this career sim. His younger brother is following him in his footsteps. It's family goals, it's brother goals. They get to play together side by side on club and country level. And now Ethan gets to don the white of Madrid and move to Spain, costing the club 90.3 million pounds. He's trying to craft his own legacy in midfield. He's playing a completely different position to his brother, so they can't really be compared. In this Galactico starting 11, that is the biggest upgrade of all time. Going from Taremi leading the line up top to Mbappe slots perfectly. And Ethan is just the perfect next heir to the throne of both Modric and Tony Cruz in the middle of the park. This team is set both for the future and the present. Gifting killing in the captain's armband. He's on penalties duties. And most importantly, they'll be competing back in the Champions League. A trophy that Killian himself is still craving. So let's see how they crack on in season three. So it turns out that Killian's move to Saudi Arabia, you know, hurt his reputation slightly. He's nowhere to be seen in the top four players of the year in 2025. It's a Liverpool front three of Gakpo, Salah and Yota, who are Premier League champions and probably won the Champions League and Lautaro Martinez. It's kind of crazy to just exclude him from the top four. Half the year at Al Hilal, half the year at Real Madrid and it turns out to be Mo Salah. At 33, the Egyptian takes home his first Ballon d'Or. And if 2025 couldn't get any worse, Real Madrid are losing out to it 100% Barcelona and Kylian the poor guy has done his ACL. That's right bro, he's just like me and he's out for only four months. Still, it's a significant chunk of the season and dents their title hopes completely. So Ethan really needs to rise above and prove to the people that he can do it without his big brother. There you have it, the Mbappe brothers first stint in Spain and their debut saw them become runners up to Barcelona. It ended up being a lot closer than it was when Mbappe did his ACL. However, according to Madrid fans and the lofty expectations of this club, it is still a failed campaign as they lost out the Spanish Supercopa in an El Clasico 2-1. They also didn't see any success in the Copa de España as they were knocked out pretty early on in, in the round of 32 to Villarreal 2-1. And with Gillian's return to the competition, Ethan's debut in Europe, it was Group E which saw them get out of the group. They then took down Chelsea 2-1 in the quarterfinals, then had to score their way past Juventus 5-4 and in the semis they were treated to an absolute beatdown, a reality check against Borussia Dortmund where BVB took them down 5-2 in aggregate and ended up winning the whole thing. We had to drop that injury bombshell onto you guys halfway through the season, the Ballon d'Or scandal, and Madrid's number nine hit with a minus one downgrade. He's still one of the world's best and managed 19 goals and three assists despite missing four months of the season and was a part of the three top contributors of the club including Valverde and Vinicius Jr. However, Ethan Mbappe, this was his moment to shine. Spending time away from his brother on the pitch, no silverware to report on, but a cute five goals and 14 assists, becoming the second best playmaker at the club. It is still a solid effort with 19 goal contributions and an average match rating of 7.31 and we didn't even mention that he had a plus three boost to his overall. Classified as a golden boy and you always know Madrid, they're on the pulse when it comes to the next generational wonder kids. They've cashed in on the youngest Mbappe early and they're about to receive the fruits of their labour now with a market valuation of 79.5 million pounds. Considering we sold Tony Cruz and Luka Modric is now pushing 40, the new era of Madrid's midfield is Mbappe certified. Gillian's injury though hasn't stopped him from being caught up to the French national team for the World Cup. Unfortunately Ethan's been left out and he's not getting on the plane. Ethan's probably going to have to wait until the 2028 Euros, most definitely the 2030 World Cup. It'll have me singing Alelabla Ole. Drawn into Group C with Denmark, Finland and New Zealand. A winnable group for them and they no doubt should make it pretty far. Deary deary me, oh goodness what is going on here? Mbappe not only a failure at club level but on the international scene, Belgium have knocked them straight out of the round of 16, eliminated, packed their bags, and without his little bro, he has failed to achieve World Cup glory this time by a long shot and eliminated by the eventual champions. They went flawless in the group stage too, finishing top with nine points, but it just all capitulated. On an individual level though, in the four games he did play, he did manage to score three goals, so he still played his part. I think the team just let him down. Let's just put it behind us, forget about it, and focus all our efforts here at the Bernabeu, we're going to put Mbappe back on the poacher development plan. And for Ethan's sake, he's going to experience his first rodeo on the box-to-box -box training. In 2026, he's back in the top four. He's been nominated alongside Dusan Vlahovic, the inevitable Haaland, and Robert Lewandowski. Does he deserve it? Not really, but considering he's the best in the game, he's going to be up there always in those nominations. But this time, it's Haaland.
Ones, who will probably be forming a little bit of a rivalry. It's like this generation's Messi versus Ronaldo as the Norwegian King takes home his first golden ball. And look what the boys have cooked up in season four. They took all that slander personally and gone out not only becoming centurions, but also being invincible in La Liga. Complete and utter domination, I say. The Mbappe brothers have conquered Spain. And with 104 points, of course they took home the Super Copa with a 2 1 win over Villarreal in the final. They couldn't complete the domestic treble, but it was a statement nonetheless. There was an opportunity for the trebles. They remained undefeated in the group stages of the Champions League. 14 points, top of the group, and in the round of 16. These are the kind of levels they're playing at. Destroyed Sporting Lisbon 8-3 on aggregate, and then were matched up against Bayern Munich. Unfortunately, it's another early quarterfinals elimination, which still sees the Champions League dream out of reach. Is this the year everything fell into place and they just all started clicking. We're gonna have to find out as Mbappe remained injury free. The 28 year old at 95, the club captain and 51 appearances, you'd expect a little bit more, but 28 goals and one assist is a decent level. It's gonna be hard to steal the show off fellow 90 rated players, but for a 95 rated striker, one of the best teams in the world. For Ethan though, it's on the complete other spectrum. At 20, he's improved at plus four, been working hard on and off the pitch. As the box to box baller, when you're surrounded by the best, you're going to become the best. He managed to accomplish double figures in both production, goals and assists, becoming one of the main playmakers behind Vinicius Jr. with 24. It was a remarkable year as now that high attacking work rate is so, such a handy thing to have in his locker. Also achieving his first maxed out attribute with 99 long pass. The only way is up baby as he has now cracked that nine figure range. He's entered the club and he's become more valuable than Killian with an 105.5 million pound price tag. Between them though, 66 goal contributions. The French connection is real. The production, that production from any duo would shock the world. It's a family affair and it's going to put them in good stead for the years to come. The Copa de España and Champions League are next on their hit list and the Mbappe brothers aren't stopping here. And with the 2028 Euros coming up, yeah, season five, it's going to get sticky. A brother combo that is football heritage personified. For season five, half a decade through, the pace is on point, but I think it's time to get his central midfield development plan rocking and working on capturing those five-star skill moves. Meanwhile, for Mbappe, yeah, there's not much we can really do with him, to be fair. Like, complete striker. Every training plan we put him on is kind of redundant. And it's do or die, really, if they want to make a decent run in the Champions League. They're in a team at the peak of their powers. Anyways, let's see what the simulation has got in store for us as the brothers take on season 27-28. have seen 104. How's 107 points for size? They've gone on and done one better than season four, securing the La Liga title, defending their crown, only copping one loss all campaign, and again they take home the Super Copa in a convincing El Clasico win. However, it's the Copa de España that always evades them. It was another early knockout, this time the quarterfinals to Valencia 4-2, so they are losing games domestically, just not in the league. But the chance for the treble and the first Champions League of Kilion's career is on the line tonight. Top and Group G with 16 points in the round of 16 destroying Wolves. They also took down their former employers PSG 4-2 in the quarters and they got their sweet, sweet revenge against Borussia Dortmund, the team who knocked them out last time around and now they fully earned their moment. The Mbappes and co up against the seven-time champs the Rossoneri. It's a chance for them to make history. Do the family proud. The brotherly French connection are frothing. They're gagging for a 15th title at Madrid. They want to earn that status of being a Galactico and Ethan's ready for battle. Kilian knows what's up. He's a big game player. He's been here before. Now over to Mbappe who tried taking someone on the middle of the park and Adley lucky to get away there with a the yellow. Back on over to Teo Hernandez and Rodrigo wanted. He was out for blood and he sent Theo Hernandez to the shadow realm. This game is getting brutal. Camavinga fires back inside to Ethan. And he sees his brother making a run on the inside and he finds Vinicius Jr. I think he's on side. He's squared it back to Mbappe and Kylian denied of breaking the deadlock. Now, oh, sends his man to the bloody barbershop. Back inside, Rodrigo Mbappe with a cheeky back heel. And now it's time for Vinicius Jr. to put on the afterburners. Mbappe is in the box. He's a fox in the box. Deflection. That's a handball every day of the week. Oh, look at that pass and play. Adley now through on goal. It's Courtois versus the Frenchman and he squares it across. 
totally out. Right on the edge of half time. The worst way to go into the sheds. And he's got the audacity to whip out the gritty. I feel violated. The Mbappe boys getting their pants pulled down on the biggest of stages. Take on our first attack of the second half. Rodrigo's going to cut it back. Mbappe's there inside. And it's another big block. But Ethan wants a pop. It's a moment. My heart sunk. Frimpong leaps up like a salmon. Back to Mbappe. Back to Vinicius. And he can set up something. It's taken a bit of a deflection. But Mbappe's going to win that foot race. And with his 99 pace, needs to slot that one home. And Magnan. We've got to work out tactical nuance here. We're bringing on Sir Bozlai for Vinny Jr. And Rodrigo's coming off for Kubo. It's going to fall out to Ethan again. Love the little footwork there. Takafuza Kubo inside to Sir Bozlai, who hits the woodwork. Valverde can see Mbappe on the run. And he is on the run. And he's off to the races. It's Speedy Gonzalez for the equalizer. Killion, get the ball out the back of the net, mate. We got no time. He comes up with a counter-attack for the ages. Finished his dinner, tucked it home past his fellow countrymen. It was do or die, it was crunch time. There you have it, it's gonna take another half an hour for the Mbappe boys to imprint their legacy on this game. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh no! They've gone to sleep for one second and Milan, just like they have all game, they've taken their opportunity and it's a super sub in off the bench, Shubal Dia. Never heard of the man and it's probably gonna be the biggest goal of his career if it gets them the win. Courtois standing there like a bloody NPC goes through his legs. Now Kubo on the run. We need to wait for some defense, for some arrival. To what did he say? In the box. So we've got a man in the middle for the sweat. It somehow bundled its way in. Our man Dominic Sabozla. We've got a super sub of our own. It's a goal made completely from our substitutions. The Mbappe boys had nothing to do with it. Puts the boy through. Killian's still got a bit of juice left in the tank. And he's arrived into the box. He's trying to hit it near post. Magnan with the save. And no one was there to tap it home. We are going a penalty kicks to decide it tonight. It's Benacer first up to take it. The Algerian goes straight down the middle. Come on. Slotted home. Magnon's read it. And he's missed his penalty in the biggest game of his career for the Champions League final. But Courtois makes amends. And now the man who had the equaliser. Can he be cool, calm and collected? Dominic Shaboshlai. Okay. Magnon is coming out in hot tonight. We've been shipped. It's Pirlo-esque from Tonali. What is going on? The pressure's on here. He needs to Convert, what, how? Mike Nan is literally a superhuman. And Rafael Liao is gonna win the Champions League for Milan. Okay, Mike Nan was playing like his rent was due. He saved every single penalty. And it sees the Holy Grail unattained. And when it's not United, it's not United. I know a cannon event when I see one, boys. Keep your heads high because we've still got Euros action this summer. 3-0 on penalties. I don't even know where the silver lining is there, but we'll check in and touch base. Captain coming through. 32 goals and one assist. Those are the kind of numbers we want to see and he's putting on a show alongside Ethan who's come through again with double figures in both departments He can do it all polar opposite to his older brother He loves setting up goals with 29 assists and 16 goals himself Killian wants nothing to do with assists and that's fine by me as long as he's banging them in and he deserves it You can see there's a good player in there somewhere and now it's worked up to a market value of 176 million pounds Meanwhile, his big bro goes down 3% now standing at 95 million million pounds. It's not all doom and gloom people because Ethan got the call. The Mbappe bros will be representing France together. After a long hard season, the boys have grifted their way into Euro 2028, been drawn into Group C alongside Belgium, Scotland and Iceland. So let's see if they can turn their fortunes around for their country. The way these brothers are going, they're desperate for world domination. First up, conquer Europe. And this would be the picture perfect way to kick off season 6 as they topped Group C again, just like in the World Cup with 9 points this time to win the business against the Czech Republic. They scraped by and just edged past the three Lions to book their spot into their second European final in the space of a month. So let's try not be the bad luck charm in this five star outfit. Don't know why Koeman wasn't starting. We've got to have Mike Nyan in between the sticks after that Champions League final performance. we got to watch this one go down. That's how the Dutch line up with a prime Chavi. Gakpo leading the line. Frankie de Jong in midfield. Gravenberch to lit the captain. And the Dutch go 1-0 up. Okay, Magnan doesn't have that Champions League form in him as Cody Gakpo, a Ballon d'Or nominee from a couple years back, gets the Dutch ahead. Oh, and it's two, just like that. Marin Boaru, what is going on in 25 minutes? They find themselves 2-0 down. Just like the Paris riots, they're in all sorts at the moment, the French. With one chance, the Netherlands have managed to score two goals. Like, make it make sense. Ah, oh, the Dutch are all over them like white on rice. I'm gonna have to jump in here. I don't even care. They haven't even showed up tonight, and now it's time 
time for us to save something. Just gotta go all out attack, ultra attack, and send the troops forward. Big tackle, Kim Pempe. He's gotten into him, and Mbappe can just take it forward and go on a run up. He's trying to breeze past the defenders, and we've half the deficit. There's still time, people. I repeat, there is still time. We caught the Dutch defense lacking. Shades of his Champions League final equalizer. And Ethan's just going to cut around his defenders back inside to Coman. Mbappe is there. Killian at the near post. And it's a quick fire double. He has risen from the ashes. The French were dead and buried. They weren't showing anything. Any signs of life and now they've resurrected like the undertaker they've hopped out of the coffin and the netherlands were about to carve their name on the trophy we're gonna have one last attack here and oh wow frankie de jong that's gotta be a red ref he didn't get any of the ball it's debatable but i think frankie should be sent for an early ice bath he could have killed the king oh the drama the drama they love doing it the hard way don't they and camavinga has the free license to pop one and gorta the set piece opportunity here from the corner it's diaby the ball in side and it's Heath and Mbappe off the set piece. The wayward header deflected into his path and it's Killian from Wish. Killian with dreadlocks. Our boy Ethan sees the moment and these fairy tales just write themselves and he was there just lurking at the back stick and this family have gotten a chokehold on tonight's final. It's his sixth goal in the competition. He's gonna find Diaby on the outside. A cheeky little back here and now Ethan can set up Mbappe and at the near post he denied us the dream finish. Beg a dream, my son. Get out the pen and paper. You gotta rewrite those lyrics. It might have been a Killian double, but it was an Ethan winner to get France out of the mud and rescue this game from being a colossal failure. You'd love to be on the streets of Paris tonight. No riots, no fighting. It'll just be celebrations for days. Finally coming through with a big final W, and now Killian gets to lift it. It's a family affair. And now they are famous names in the history of French football. They'll be remembered forever, although it's not a World Cup. It's a start. Not only one, but two Mbappes could be up for a Ballon d'Or if they keep up this form, these kind of performances. Let's soak this up and enjoy the celebrations, but there is more to come. And it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing to achieve just the biggest of successes with your brother by your side. And the player of the tournament gets announced, and Ethan actually takes it home. The official stats from the tournament, the top goal scorer was actually Ethan from center mid. The box-to-box -box development plan is doing wonders for him. Eight goal contributions, six goals and two assists, including that one in the final. He's outscored one of the most famous strikers in the world. They've fulfilled their mission on the international scene with their country, and now it's time to head back to club level, put on the white of Madrid, and go again. All guns are blazing for the Champions League. It is coming to my attention that Ethan could be in contention for a Ballon d'Or, but the way FIFA is, the way career mode's been programmed, you can't win it unless you're in attacking position then it's gonna take 19 weeks for him to convert maybe converting him into a cam might do the trick it's been a seamless transition over two weeks but is this position conversion gonna really launch him into the 90s and it does okay now he's a player of world-class stature and we can start putting him on that advanced playmaker development plans make sure he's executed as a cam right behind his brother it's our favorite time of the year who's gonna become the 2028 Ballon d'Or winner and it's those three up front for Madrid up against Sterling Haaland who's already 1-1 trying to go back to back in a year where he's pretty much won everything besides the Champions League he's took one over Haaland and at 29 it wins his second Ballon d'Or I'm sure there's room for more in the future but it's just another one to add to his collection the man's finally receiving his flowers and has become a big stepper here in 2029 they've come through again pulling up invincible in La Liga it's like just another day at the office for these guys with 108 points three draws and no losses all season only can Conceding 10 goals, scoring 92. Yeah, it's crazy out here. They're just collecting Spanish titles like they're Infinity Stones as the Supercopa narrowly defeated by Barca 2-1. And in the Copa de España, they finally broke their Spanish Cup drought, which sets them up ever so perfectly for the chance to go at it and get another treble here in May 2029. On the European stage, they're back again and they have come through on fire. Now they have the chance to complete their redemption arc, a second shot at glory 
Three. Same deal as the Euro 2028 final. I'm going to watch this one play out in the visual sim, see how it unfolds, and jump in if we really have to save the day. Here we go. Ethan's in the clear here. One on one with Bazunu, and he makes no mistake. And look at him go. He can set up his brother again, who sets it off to Federico Valverde. Doubling their advantage right before the halftime break. Goal for Ethan. Assist for Killian. We can't bottle this now. Ethan's in the clear again, and he's only gone and made it three. Chelsea don't know what's hit them, and Rodrigo makes it four. This is just an absolute demolition job. It has been the most one-sided Champions League final I have ever witnessed. Let the celebrations commence. The Mbappe boys, they didn't want to leave any room for doubt. They didn't want to do it the hard way. They got it over and done with. And what a performance it was. The two brothers linking up and having the game of their lives. Now, Killian fulfills his dream at the ripe old age of 30, winning the club's 15th European title with his little bro by his side. A night that'll live long in the memory for the French and the Mbappe legacy. Chelsea just had no answer and just like that, the treble is complete. Ending their sixth campaign together on the highest of highs, so let's touch base. And the gap has never been closer. Ethan has closed it to within two points. It's taken him till 30 to achieve Champions League glory and Ethan, he's still only 22. Been hit with a plus four upgrade and is standing at 93. One of the world's best. Probably the best pair of football brothers world football has ever seen. And here we go, the top goal scorer. Of course, it's got to be that man with 35 goals and five assists. You'd expect those kind of numbers from a 95 rated striker and his hitman brother, he just knows how to do them both. He likes a little bit of balance in his life. The same 59 appearances, he found the back of the net 18 times with 36 goal assists, being the go-to assist man at the club. Honestly, they both have pretty fair cases to win in the Ballon d'Or in 2029. His price tag now stands at 164.5 million and a 93 million pound value for the now 30 year old Killian. They've won everything there is to win here at the Bernabeu. It's been a dream move for them both. However, it might be time to go out on top. Look for new horizons. Look for a new challenge and see what kind of offers both of them attract in this summer market in a World Cup year. The uproar this would cause if it actually happened in real life. But for the sake of this career sim and just to experiment a little bit, we're putting them both on the transfer list as over the offseason, Killian's actually gone down to minus one. He stands at 94. And the first offer of the summer has come through and you can start to see which one is the more desirable brother on the market. It's Ethan attracting all the bids as Man City have come through with 177.4 million pounds. Look, it's clear, it's obvious, the Premier League is the next destination. However, with Killian's main rival, Haaland being there, he's still there up front with Phil Foden. Given the midfield competition isn't that strong, I just don't think it's going to be the right fit for the brothers to thrive. I'm sorry, City, and I just did a rebuild on you guys, so that's enough Man City love from me for the year, so we're just going to have to politely reject it. Ah, uh, yes, now the real players have come to the table. My boys, Man United and the Red Devils have literally just done top levels of shithousery, bid the exact same as City. All the rage is for Ethan right now. Everyone wants to get a piece of the pie, so we're accepting it. It's the end of an era for the Galacticos as Ethan changes white for red and a journey to the best league in the world awaits them both. It's now the perfect matchup as they can go head to head with Haaland every week in the Prem and it's become a custom. If you buy one, you're gonna get the other. They're two peas in a pod, the famous package deal and it's right on time. It's a blockbuster move before the 2030 World Cup. It's a new venture for them both as the Manchester club had to fork out upwards of 260 million pounds for them both with the older brother only costing 92.6 mil. The family can now join forces in this incredibly mid Manchester United squad. Unlike Chelsea and Man City, they are not really competing for Champions League titles, but how is Anthony Martial still here? What is going on? What is going on? You're saying one move to the Premier League and he's been glitched up to a 99. This has happened in so many videos. People have called me out, but a glitch is a glitch. The dumbest glitch has been activated and he has now become 99 rated on a technicality. He has a bunch of attributes maxed out. Ball control, curve, dribbling, finishing, long passing, long shots. Like he's just instantly become the GOAT. Whilst on the other side of the spectrum with Killian, it's all about maintaining him into the 90s. We don't want that 30 age to hit him like a truck. Let's try and prevent the career mode curse as much as possible. Back to the rest of the team though, and they might be in trouble. They might need to carry this team to glory. Very little change has occurred at this club over the course of this simulation, and I guess you can say career mode's been realistic. It's Ballon d'Or season, and we all know who'd win this if it was an actual striker, 
but Killian's still here along with his former teammates Sir Bosley and Rodrigo and his main arch nemesis throughout pretty much the entirety of his career, Erling Haaland. And that's exactly who he needs to keep his eyes on. He needs to have one eye open when he's sleeping at night because Haaland's come through with, what, his second or third Ballon d'Or of the video so far. Our boy's still only on two as he's become pretty brittle and injury prone in his later years. He's been injured for the majority of the first season and it's that classic case of, you know, half a season at one club, half a season in the next and you're losing out the Ballon d'Or race to Haaland who's just been at Man City this whole time. But it is what it is. Keep your head up, King. We've got bigger fish to fry. Look, I can't lie. We did some dirty deals behind the scenes in order just to get this United team competitive. Though we're not a shambles. Plus the addition of the Mbappe brothers. They went on to win the league with 96 points. Taken down Haaland's Man City and in his debut campaign in England he's gone on to win the lot. The brothers have become champions at United and over in the FA Cup. They went on over to the final to defeat Everton 2-1 at Wembley to double up. And the domestic treble however was not on the cards as they lost out in round 4 eliminated to Brighton 2-1. And you might have seen earlier that they were in fact in the Europa League so you can tell the kinds of shambles they were in and it just the jokes continue because they lost out against Red Bull Salzburg in the final 2-1. Did they really need to try and win the Europa League? It wasn't at the forefront of their mind as in the World Cup 2030 they've been drawn into Group B alongside Finland, Qatar and Canada which should just be a walk in the park to be fair. No disrespect but come on. It's France and the Mbappes we're talking about here. Let's touch base again and see if they can transform the club form on the international front. It was actually the first kind of letdown season that we had with Kylian. Now he's hit 31, the minus one downgrade and he just had an injury riddled season. His little brother outscored him. Technically the perfect player. At 23 years of age, 26 goals and 35 assists. These are kind of Ballon d'Or numbers to shout about. You got a feel for the man but between them the brothers are coming up with like 80% of United's goal production. In terms of financial value, it's actually Kylian who's risen a bit. 97.5 million pounds. That's the closest he's been to the nine figure range for quite some time. And Ethan's only gotten himself another pay rise. He's getting paid nearly two million pounds a week. The club captain is bloody raking it in. Nevertheless, duty calls and the nation's hopes are resting on their shoulders. Both selected for international duty. However, Killian's been benched for Wahi up front as Lebler have made it through to another World Cup final. This time against Portugal and it's a team that always haunts me in like these rebuilds, these player sims. We've lost a few to Diogo Jota and the gang, but over in Group B, it is France to come through on top, which was expected. And the Mbappe boys defeated Germany 3-1 in the round of 16, which was the phase that they didn't make it past in the 2026 World Cup. A cheeky little 2018 final replay against Croatia where they got the better of them 3-0 and up against the United States in the semis. It was a five-goal aggregate thriller, which has got them through to the biggest games of their careers so far. The 2030 World Cup final. A five-star classic to do battle with the Portuguese on the world stage. So let's get it done. If they win this tonight, they'd go down as one of the best brother combos we have ever witnessed. And that's what they're fighting for. The best trophy in football, the one that everyone wants to win. The brotherly duo fought long and hard to get here and now Kylian will get proceedings underway. Play the triangles. Better triangle than the bloody Illuminati as Ethan plays through Kylian. A fake shot inside. He has had his number and we've played it back into him and he's rifled it into the top corner. His first chance of the game. And Kylian is showing his old age and wisdom in front of Nets. Only needing one golden chance to put his country into the lead and get the first goal of the night. The seventh goal in seven matches. He is having some tournament. Club allegiances are thrown out the window on the international scene. It's Portugal roll through here. What a save, Alban Lafont. Now coming through, Diaby can see Ethan on the run and Ethan can set up Wahi from the left and it's two. In 25 minutes, the French have gotten themselves another one. Set up by Ethan this time and the captain is leading by example. Inside Goncalo Ramos with the power shots and you can never be too comfortable especially when the world's best are at play and that was an absolute rocket into the bottom right hand corner. Now Diaby, what a challenge. Look at him go, the little pocket rocket and Mbappe's making a run on the 
inside here. Kilian, he's got his brother in the middle of the backup parade. He's in for a third. And Ethan Mbappe at 99 is proving to be one of the best players we've ever witnessed on this channel. It's the team chemistry, the family love. Guys, you seen what I'm seeing? Who's that fourth official? Damn, she's fine. Yabi now, this counter-attack is just deadly. Let the two Mbappe boys cook. Oh no, Portugal's in here. Lafont's come out of his goal. And he's had a mare at the back. And how's that gone through? This final, this video just continues to throw curveball after curveball. Joel Felix now. Portugal, they're getting into the groove. And Joel Neves has a pop from distance. Lafont has to keep us in it. Offloads to Zer Emery. Killian can find him again. Just one more touch was needed. Mbappe can set up. Kamavinga. Oh. Full time. That's it. We survived the late scan resurgence from the Portuguese. It wasn't as dominant as that Champions League final 5 0. It's another five goal thriller. Third time in their country's history being world champions and get revenge for Euro 2016. This time, instead of Killian lifting the Euros, it'll be Ethan who gets the opportunity to do the honors. He's the best player in the world for a reason, and he deserves this moment. What an evening, and now the French are world champions, European champions. They're an unstoppable force of nature with these two in their ranks. And who knows what would have happened in, you know, just the history of world football if they ended up playing for Cameroon together. That's probably going on right now in a parallel universe, but not in this one. We had a glimpse mid-game, but these were the kind of numbers that both boys pulled through with. And it's Kilian who led by example, getting the goal-scoring claim with the golden boot, but it's Ethan who came through with just, he's got a different side to his game, that creative outlet with five goals and five assists, 10 goal contributions, eight for the other. The only reason why I want to go through with season eight is just to experiment and see, does Ethan have a real shot of winning the Ballon d'Or? If he gets converted into a center forward, it's actually going to take 352 weeks. You've got to be kidding me. So we're just going to do a right winger for now. We'll have him converted into an attacker and see if he's even nominated in the top four. One last dance, one last hurrah. You can consider the Ethan experiment failed because, yeah, the Ballon d'Or nominees have come out. It's pretty much all their former teammates, that original front three, plus Killian, who kind of is falling off, to be fair. It's always around Ballon d'Or December time of the season where he's copped an injury of some sort. And again, he's at it here with a broken tailbone for two months. And he's only scored three goals in the first half of the season, which is just terrible. Compared to his brother stats, newly converted to a left winger, thought that would make him, you know, qualified to be a Ballon d'Or nominee. But no, five goals and seven, probably not enough to get him into that upper echelon. The only reason why Big Bro's there in the first place is because of that World Cup display. And okay, he was a top goal scorer at the tournament. We'll give him that. But in this second half of the year, he has just flopped tremendously. That's the third Ballon d'Or to add to his collection. He's completed the treble. And for now, those three golden balls are the only thing he has over his younger brother. It's been one final swan song for the French world champs. Going back to back in the Prem. Finishing on top. Taking home the community shield. For the icing on top of this Mbappe cake, it could have been a domestic treble, but Man City and Haaland got the better of them too, one at Wembley. Over in the Carabao, they didn't make it far either, so it's only been a cheeky two-double, but in the Champions League, that's where all their focus was, the 2031 final, and it's a rematch against Milan. It's another major final, and it would be just such a nice way to go out. With Ethan the captain, I'm just going to quick tim this one, get it over and done with, let's see if they can get the best of Raphael Lihau and the gang. And of course they did after he sent it into extra time. It was an Mbappe double and Ethan stole the show here. The three-time Ballon d'Or winner was silenced in the big dance. In the 4-2 win, a six-goal thriller. Now they've won two Champions Leagues at two different clubs. A cheeky season eight treble with the Red Devils as we take a look at the best player at the club. Ethan, who's actually gone down a minus one. He's lost his perfect status and his brother, who's copped a minus two and had a season from hell. If you think about it, Ballon d'Or winner. Come on, only 13 goals and 34 appearances. The end is nigh. He's hit his downfall. And whoever preyed on him to fall off, your wish is slowly becoming true. However, the captain, he's still pulling up with double figures in both goals and assists. 54 goal contributions in 55 appearances. We converted him to that new attacking position and he just thrived. Now rising to an 119.5 million pound market value and his older brother, he's sitting comfortably at 94.5. It's been wild. It's been a long road, but those were the two Mbappes on the same team for the entirety of their career. Let me know, who do you think had the better career? Was it Ethan with no Ballon d'Ors, but a whole lot more goals and assists? Or Killian, who's had his real life career, plus this fictional path he's taken in FIFA? It's just the ultimate brother.
brother goals that anyone would dream of. So if you've made it this far, make sure to drop the video a like down below. Hit subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that good stuff. Hit me up on all my socials. Let me know down in the comments below who should be next. I'll be more than happy to hear your suggestions. I read all the comments. As always, I've been your boy, Sir BCHD. Have a great day. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the very next video.